Christmas. We give God glory and praise and honor for us being here once again to our radio listeners. We pray the blessings of the Lord in your life and we pray that all is well. We look to just love on you on this afternoon through the word, but we want to just say thank you to NYB Outreach Ministries, Minister Connie Hespeth, and the staff for allowing us opportunity to share one more time a message from the Lord. Amen. We thank God for waking us this morning. Another day we'll never see again, but in this day, let us make it the best that we can. We also thank God for just keeping Evangelist uh, Hespeth, her vehicle caught on fire. And we just thank God that she's safe on her way to work in the late hour. But we just glorify God. I got the call and she told me what had happened. I just thank God uh, that all is well in spite of. That's the God that we serve. He's a protector. He's a provider. He's a way maker. He's a burden bearer. He, he's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. When you feel like you don't have enough energy to do, God will do it for you. Amen. All you have to do is put an effort. But we just give God glory on today. Let us go to God in prayer and then we will hit the word today coming from the first uh, first Peter, the fourth chapter. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come once again gathered together, God, just to give you honor on today. Just to praise thy holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you, Father, for watching over us last week and last night, God. And we thank you, God, for traveling mercy all throughout the day. Father, we thank you for covering us with your son's blood for all our iniquities, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that you, O oh God, continue to fight every battle for us, O oh God. And we thank you now that we are victorious through your spirit. Father, we ask you right now to touch those that are in need right now, those that are suffering in their spirit. Father, we ask you right now to lift them up, O oh God, that, that they will elevate into you, God. We're asking you right now to bless every home that is listening to this radio broadcast, every senior citizen that's out here that can't move around. Father, we don't give up on you, God, and we know you're not going to give up on us. Touch that body right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you now to continue to guide our children in this young generation, Father. Father, there's many diversities that we face, but God, we know that you never, never lost a battle. God, we give you honor and glory for your protection, for your power, for your might, God. We thank you, God, for strengthening us, that we continue to move and continue to strive for greatness and continue to strive to do our best in this society and in the communities that we live in. Father, we're asking you right now just to lay your hands over every county, every state, and every city. Oh, God, for we know the wiles of the enemies are near. We know the wiles of the enemy, oh, God, is attacking your people, God. But, God, give us strength through every fiery dot that we be able to stand, God, and continue to march on, God, putting our best foot forward. Father, I'm asking you right now, God, to bless every bereaved family, those that have lost loved ones. Father, we ask you right now to comfort them in the midst of their sorrow, in the midst of their tears, God. We're asking you right now to give them strength. Oh, God, you are our strength and our redeemer. I thank you, oh, God, that you gave me a second chance. Over and over again, God, you forgave me. And, God, you can continue to forgive us each and every day. God, I love you. I thank you, oh, God, for all that you've done and what you're going to do. Bless the word that's getting ready to come forth this afternoon, that it will touch the heart of man. That if there's anything that's hardened in our heart, this word, oh God, will soften it, oh God, that we will take a look in the mirror, oh God, and check our own self. Father, I'm asking you today to guide us and lead us, oh God. Talk through these lips of clay, that your people, oh God, will get something out of the message on today, that they can look up to the hills with coming their help, for we know all our help coming from you, oh God. Father, I give you glory and honor in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I'm coming from the first book of Peter, first Peter, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to start at verse six. And today I want to just talk to you a little bit from the subject. Don't allow anyone to change your godly walk. Come on, somebody. Don't allow anyone to change your godly walk. We, we're in a time now that we see the influence. Sometimes influence, the bad influence can rub off on you. And then you look at yourself and wonder how in the world you get to that place. 
We have to understand that there are some people that we might even have to uh, uh, disengage with because of their negative spirit or the energy that they provide. We have to separate ourselves from those sources. Amen. So so I want to encourage you on today that you brothers and sisters don't allow anyone. I mean, I don't care if it's somebody in your family, if your mama ain't talking right, if your daddy not talking right, if grandma and grandpa ain't talking right. Don't allow anyone to change your godly walk. Don't let nobody sidetrack you. Don't let nobody get you off from going towards Jesus today. Amen. Because there are some people that don't care about Jesus. They don't care about living right. They don't care about uh, coming together in unity with love and respect and honor and truth. They want to stir up stuff. They want to keep stuff started. They want to they want to continue to add to the already uh, uh, smoking fire. But don't allow that about anybody. Don't allow anyone to change your godly walk. We, we see that influence, amen. We see it in even in politics, the one against the other. And it's such a shame that we call ourselves a, a nation that was founded on the word, that was built on the word, but yet we act like we don't know one another. We act like that we are not all God's children. I, I just don't understand today's, well, I do understand, but, but I just can't grasp how do we come to this point of wickedness but don't allow nobody to change your godly walk first peter let's go to it the fourth chapter and let's start at verse six the bible says for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead and in other words the Bible's telling us here in Peter that, that it wasn't just talking to the ones that was delivered and set free. It wasn't just preached to the ones that believed, but also to the ones that were dead. Amen. That they might be judged according to the men in their flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Amen. So in other words, this thing is for everybody. Who, whosoever will. Hallelujah. We'll accept him as their Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. It don't mean, hallelujah, that you got to be a certain nation that talk a certain language or a, a, a certain speech. No, it's anybody. Amen. This word is for all creatures, all everywhere, in every nations, in every towns and cities. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we got to preach this word to them, even those that are lost, those that don't treat themselves right. You know, those that are continue to do drugs, they're, they're basically killing themselves slowly. But we, we got to share this word today to them that they might find Jesus in the midst of their dark place. Huh? Yes, Lord, we got to continue to spread this good news. The good news is that Jesus died. That is the good news that he died for each and every one that whosoever will believe in him. Hallelujah, shall not perish, but may have everlasting life. But the world of Bible here, verse number seven, but the end of all things is at hand. This life is, is going to come to a close. My life, my journey is going to come to a close. It has an expiration date. That means that I ought to be preparing myself for when I leave this earth, that, that my heavenly home is ready and excited for me. I got to show something now. So when I leave here, I'll be expecting something when I get over there. Amen. I can't wait to the last minute. Uh, you can't wait to the last minute. Come on, somebody. I I want you to get this thing. You can't wait to, to your death to start trying to live, right? Because it's too late. Uh -uh. You got to start putting your best foot forward now. You got to be the best person you can be now. You can't wait to the grave to say, I want to make it right. I want to have a loving heart. You can't wait till you go under the ground to say, I want change in my neighborhood. I want to love everybody. And no, It's too late then. You got to love them now while you are in a right mind, uh, while you are able to talk, while you are able to hug. While you are able to do something good, you got to do those things now because you know what? The, the end is near. Amen. But the end of all things at hand, the Bible's letting us know that we got to get ready because the end is coming. Glory to God. What profits a man to, to gain the world and lose his soul? That's the Bible is talking to us today. You can have all the riches in the world. You can have all of the gold that's in Fort Knox and your soul is just as dirty as the devil in hell himself. But yet you think that you are going to heaven anyway? No, you're not going. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Seek ye first the kingdom of his righteousness. Amen. When we start seeking God, amen, I can love on you. I don't care who you are. 
Amen. I can love on you even through your condition. Amen. I'm not sitting here want to want to see you down and out. I want to see you elevated. I want to see the best in you. Amen. We get to talk to all sorts of people. Amen. We got to talk to people that that got their their mind uh, uh, is what we call uh, bipolar or, or schizophrenia. You know, we're dealing with those. And, and, and the most thing that you need to understand with them is that they got an imbalance in their mind. They're fighting. Amen. With, with, with darkness in their light. Amen. And they're struggling in their spirit. Amen. So we have to show love. Glory to God. Amen. Just, you know, we call them crazy, but but we don't know what brought them to that place. Hey, we don't know that if they was raped or not. We don't know if they was abused as a child. Amen. So we got to have, have compassion on our brothers and sisters, even if we don't agree with the things that they doing. But but I'm here to encourage you today that but the end of all things is at hand. Peter is saying the things of all, uh, 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 the, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch and watch unto prayer. Amen. In other words, I got to not just uh, 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 be uh, be be a sober minded, but uh, but I got to watch as well as pray. I mean, I can't just pray and go into this thing blind. I got to have my eyes o- open so I can see beyond w- what my natural eyes is looking at. Come on, somebody. Amen. Be sober minded. God saying, be sober today because you know when I was drinking out there and I was so intoxicated, I couldn't think. I would say anything that come out my mouth. I would do anything that I wanted to do. It, 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 you know, when your mind is clouded with drugs and alcohol, you substance to do anything. You will say anything. You will get out of your natural character and you will take on the character of the enemy because he is the one that w- 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 don't care what he say and what he do. Come on. So we got to be therefore sober and watch into prayer above all things, having fervent charity. Oh, we don't have charity anymore in this nation. Uh, uh, it's all about me, my Myself and I, hey Amen. I don't want to help nobody. <laughs> you can help somebody. You know, there are many people that don't have children. You know, they, they got their well off, as you used to say. Hey Amen. But they won't help a soul. Hey? Oh, but wouldn't they die? Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing that they blessed the family, hey Amen? Or blessed the family of children, hey Amen, that didn't have, hey Amen? You know, when you can't take this stuff with you. You can't take none of your riches with you, hey Amen. When you go, you going by yourself, naked into the world you came in naked you gonna leave oh but above all things have fervent charity among yourself you see what it's saying but with so many people today talking about all people want is a handout all they want is a handout i'm so sick of seeing folks say that because you don't know what a person went through you don't know a person's story and i see people on social media twitter and facebook they talking about people i'm talking about people that they see in the community talking about how they all just want a handout but every once in a while everybody needs somebody to help them every once in a while i get down and out every once in a while i get low in my chips and i need somebody to to send a blessing my way amen don't mean that i'm i'm just a no good lazy person it just mean that i'm in a season where i'm having some financial crisis and, and i need somebody to help me amen you worried about the kind of car somebody drive you looking at their vehicle uh, but you don't know they lost their job and their 401k you looking at that vehicle and they pull up at that at that at that mission or oh, they getting groceries and you want to know why they driving that that sixty thousand dollar car and they over there trying to get groceries, but you don't know their story. That's why we can't judge the appearance of the outside. We got to look at the inside and the need of a person. Come on, somebody. But the fervent charity, oh, above all things, we got to have a fervent charity among yourself, for charity shall cover the multitude of sin. Love covers the multitude of sin. If you just love me, hallelujah, you we, you good right there. Amen. If I just love you back, oh, we good right there. If love was shown, hallelujah, in every neighborhood in the country, in the country they live in, oh, we wouldn't be where we are now. Oh, because love, oh, love will make me make the right decision. Hallelujah. Love want to treat us equal. Love, hallelujah, won't see color, but love, hallelujah, genuine love is from the spirit. Glory to God. So charity shall cover a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. But Bible says that in verse nine, that we got to use hospitality 
hostility one towards another without grudging. Have you seen them people give you stuff in the same thing, same mouth they giving you something in the same mouth say you gonna blow it. The same mouth they say I know you gonna uh, do the wrong thing with it. Oh, but you might as well keep that blessing because if you give grudgingly, even in the church, folks say I ain't giving all my money. Oh, I'm just gonna give them this because they waste so much as it is. Do you find yourself still needing it and you want to know how in the world I'm still struggling financially because you give grudgingly. If you go somewhere and you give your money grudgingly, you might as well keep it. As a matter of fact, you might as well burn it because plus the spirit that you give, you can't get nothing else because you grudgingly gave. Oh, you know how it is sometimes. Oh, I, they, you know what they say? I done gave, I done gave Sister Lois or I done gave my, my cousin John Big Mama house and all they going to do is turn it up. But you can sit there and say, yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I let them get my um, Big Mama house and, you know, yeah, you know, you want to sound good, but in your heart, you say, I know they're going to wreck it. I know they're going to turn it up. Oh, grudgingly, grudgingly, grudgingly. It says that we ought to have his hostility. Use hostility. Use love. Use compassion one to another without grudging. Don't grudge to do good. Amen. Don't grudge to co- create programs to help those that are poor. Oh, you would want to talk about it. You you got a got a plan in place, but then when you give, you're talking about it. Oh my God. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. And if you if ye be reproached for the name of Christ. Happy are you. Amen. For the spirit of glory and God rests upon you and their part and on their part. Amen. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. There are some people that don't care about you calling on the name of Jesus Christ. They don't care about Jesus. They don't care about you. But you that are partakers in Jesus Christ, you that had a personal relationship, a spiritual encounter, you know that he's real. You know what he did at the cross. You know that he died for our sins. Amen. You glorify because he went to create a place for you. Come on, somebody. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if it was not so, I would have told you. Hallelujah. But if I go, I'm going to come again. Oh, hallelujah. That's the word of God. Amen. So we that 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 know that that we're going to endure some hardship. We're going to endure some pain. We're going to endure because we are sold out for Christ. Amen. We come under the attack because we are believers. But glory. Hallelujah. To the lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to the lamb. For when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse number 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Amen. And it don't have to be a physical murder. It can be a murder in your spirit. You can you can have hatred to a point that you say, I hope she's sick. I hope she I hope she lose everything. I hope he don't get that job. I hope he don't marry that person. And you know what? You find yourself lonely. Oh, and by yourself because you spoke the words on somebody else. You know, it's the words we speak. Amen. It it, it does something in the atmosphere. Either we can speak life or we can speak death. But the power of the tongue is either or. You can speak life into a person that you, you know, you know or see. I'm going to speak good. I know that we can be the best county we can be. I know that there's some diversity, but I believe that deliverance is going to come. I believe that there are some people that got a hardened heart. They, 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 They don't care about what offends you. They don't care about history that was bad. But I pray that one day they will find Jesus on a Damascus Road experience and and get on their knees and reach to the heavens and say, Lord, save me. Oh, my God. I just know that they're going to be recovered. I I glorify in that because I was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer. That's that one that's sowing that discord. That's that one that continue to gossip about everybody on the phone. You talking about so-and-so husband, but yet he ain't did a thing but to be a provider. But you want to tear her down and her family. Oh, you evildoer. Oh, but as 
a busybody, even those that stay busy, you know, those ones, they, they just strive on sowing discord. They can't wait to get the hot, juicy gossip and, and they come to your house with it and lay it at your doorstep. And they all they want to do is to take it to your house and, and for you to spread it. Amen. But at the end, they're going to say you the one that did it and they're going to have their hands covered. Uh, uh, but these are the busybody, busybody trying to tear the church down, trying to tear the pastor down, trying to tear ministry work down it, these busybody oh man oh, but but let none of you suffer as a busybody but in other words don't entertain mess don't partake with them that have no clear direction on how to get to the kingdom this is what we know this is what we saying today don't let nobody sidetrack you get you off from going to glory amen because you know what when you go to glory you can't go and tell, tell God, God, it was it was Jane that did it. God, Jane caused me to lose my salvation. <laughs> you can't go to God and say, John, he caused me to lose my salvation. He came over my house and, and, and he just made me know you going to go before the Lord. I'm going to go before the Lord myself. I can't give an account for you and you can't give an account for me for the Lord. Our God, the living and true God going to say, this is what you done. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can't bl pay, uh, play the blame game. Uh, you can't point the finger when we get up there. <laughs> ain't no, ain't no, ain't no blue and red when you get to heaven. Ain't, ain't no nationality when we get to heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's one race, one body, one spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. So I ain't going to let nobody that don't know where they're going, how they're going to get there, sidetrack me, get me off. Amen. The direction of getting to heaven. I'm not going to do that. The Bible says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. These are us. This is for us right here. These that, that say that we're sold out. These that know the scripture like the back of their hand. But yet we we stir up division. Yet we keep mess going. Yet we we, we, we sow discord. Yet we have no unity. Yet we, we sit here and try to correct somebody else and we live a wreck. Our life live a mess. Huh? But the time is come that judgment will begin at the house. God is coming to the house without a spot or wrinkle. He's coming to the church first and we are the church. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What's going to happen to those that don't believe, those that don't want to repent, those that want to continue to kill their brother, kill their sister, continue to have hatred in their heart? What's, if, if the judgment coming to the people of God first, the, the church is us, if it's going to hit us first, what about them that have no lawless, that have no law? Oh, my God, it's going to be woo-wee. My God, my God. Hallelujah. And if the righteous scarily be saying, you know, that means we, we just made it by the, by the skin of our teeth. We just made it. Amen. We was all of, a foot away from hell. But glory be to God, he pulled us enough. Hallelujah. Pulled us enough that we didn't tip over. <laughs> Amen. So if the righteous scarily be saved, they just got it. <laughs> they just made it. <laughs> Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? My God. Ooh. Oh, my God. God is trying to wake us up today. <laughs> Hallelujah. This stuff is not happening for, for just just no reason. Oh, God is preparing us to say, you know what? The time is near. The kingdom of God is at hand that we got to repent. Glory to God. Oh, yes, Lord. But if, hallelujah, the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Oh, if the believer just, be. glory to God. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Hallelujah. The Bible's always speaking truth. Amen. See, we are in the last days, and I know that many people say, my grandma and my great-grandma been saying that. Oh, but we still in the last days. Hallelujah. We don't know the, about when the last days is truly come. Hallelujah. Because you don't know when you're going to check out of here. We don't know when we're going to die. Oh, we don't know that time. Oh, yes. So we are seeing that the prophecy in the Bible is right. Hallelujah. Second Timothy third and 1, 3 and 1. It says, this Know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Are, are you witnessing now perilous times? Are you continue to see murder in the streets that the blood in the earth cry out? Do you continue to see that hatred is built up so strong over stupid stuff? 
Hallelujah. That is, it's allowing people to lose their spiritual connection to God. Oh, do you understand that because we disagree in something of opinion that it causes us to lose our soul salvation? Don't you see the enemy is working through chaos? Oh, the perilous days are here. Hallelujah. For the Bible says, for men shall be lovers of their own self. Covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous, disobedience to parents, unthankful and unholy. Do you see the unholiness that goes around because me and you disagree? You can't stand me because we disagree in opinion. You hate me. You wish I was dead. Do you understand the hatred that's arising in this nation? The fire that is coming through this nation is wicked. It's on the verge of tipping over. Do you see that we are in the perilous times? Oh, my God. But men in the last days, ha, oh my God, boastful, proud, talking about the things that they accomplish and the things that they can do because of the power they got in the office and all of this stuff. All oh, lovers of their own self, having a form of God, They're talking about God and talking about they are bow down, they only bow down to God. They ain't worshiping nothing else but God, but yet they do everything else but do what they say. Oh, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turning away. Many say they believe in Jesus Christ, that they love God, but their actions. See, this is an action thing. Amen. You can have lip service all day long. You can say whatever you want to say, but if your lips ain't add adding up to your action, then, then what you saying in your mouth is a lie. Oh my God. Hallelujah. But their actions. They say they love Jesus Christ. They say they go to church on Sunday. They say they believe he died, but yet they have re re hatred in their heart. Yet they, they have no love of compassion for the poor. Yet they don't want to do the right thing. Hallelujah. From such turning away. Oh, my God. They are far from the truth. Hallelujah. If we truly want to be a better society, then it first starts with me. It starts with me, people of God. Everybody listening on this radio broadcast this afternoon. If we really want change in our community, our society, our neighborhood, it first starts with me. And it starts with you. We, 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 we have to, to call things out. And we have to guide people back to Christ. We have to show them the light, amen, that is in us. And every one of us, amen, can carry that light if we follow the will of the Lord. My Bible says in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long su suffering and doctrine. We have to get back to Bible. Every living person needs this word because what we are seeing in our communities, this country is wickedness and all of the sin that's increasing. The hatred of the heart is pouring out in videos and social media all over this country. But I'm reminded that the Bible is true because God speaks about the lawlessness in the land. That means that sin is ruling. That means that I can be who I want to be. Even if it go against God, I can live my life because I can tell you nobody pays my bill but me. I can set you up and rob you because I could do what I want to do. I'm the master of my own universe. This is what lawlessness does. But Matthew, the 24th chapter said, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. You see, the Bible is never wrong. I don't care. You can go to any library in the, in the USA. And you can get all of those books. But there's one book that's either came to pass or the prophecy has come to pass. And that's the Holy Word of God. Amen. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care what you feel about it. Amen. The Bible is right. <laughs> Written over 2,000 years ago. Way over there. Amen. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Don't you see? The love of many has waxed cold. They don't care. Hallelujah. As long as they can be rich, as long as they can be famous, as long as they can do what they want to do, they don't have no remorse. They don't care what God is saying. Lawlessness and lawlessness is in the land. Lawlessness. 
All we have to do is have love, brothers and sisters. Love enough to have compassion on people that we don't even know. You know, many times you go to restaurants and you see people paying for your meal. That is a simple gesture of love. I've done the same thing. Somebody paid for my meal. I paid for somebody else's. Hey, man, if we continue to do wonderful things such as that, hey, man, that love will spread. Glory to God. But it's so easy to, to, to be negative and, and, and so negative. And it, that negative, it seems like it just takes up like a vine. Y'all see down four one going towards Raleigh, those vines take up those uh, utility poles. And if you don't attend, they continue to get they continue to get out of hand. But we have to know that God is the center of our life. And we, brothers and sisters, have to continue to, to acknowledge him in all our ways. But I know a Savior that bled and died for all our sins. Amen. That we have to have repentance and have a clean heart before we enter into heaven's gate. Today I offer you Jesus Christ. He's the one that, that, that died for you and me. That whosoever will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I pray the blessing of the Lord on your life. Don't let anyone change your godly walk. God bless you. I love you. Thank you.